Hello guys, in this video, I'm going to deploy a machine learning application into a cloud server like Heroku with the help of Docker's and GitHub Actions. Okay, now GitHub Actions, whenever I say, I'm basically talking about CI CD pipeline. That basically means as soon as I commit anything from here, automatically a deployment should happen into the server. And before that, I'll also make sure that I will try to dockerize this entire application that I've actually created. Now, right now here, you can see this is my machine learning application, a simple machine learning application. And this machine learning application is nothing but Boston house pricing uh, data set we have basically used. So whenever I dip, I probably have created a front end, wherever I put inputs and predict it, it is going to give me the price of the house. So first of all, let me quickly run this. And again, guys, I've created many this kind of project videos, so you can definitely watch that. But here I've directly written the code, you know, probably done the exploratory data analysis and all. So if you really also want to refer this, definitely refer it from the GitHub. Okay, but I'm not going to implement this because I've done it many number of times. So first of all, uh, if I just go and uh, write Python uh, app.py, here you'll be able to see how my output will look like. Okay. So it is running. Let's see. So for, for, for the first time, I think it'll it'll take some time. Anyhow, uh, I'm just going to run this so 127.0.0. Now here you'll be seeing that my application will look something like this. Okay. So my application looks something like this. So here I'm just going to put up some information like this. Okay. Let's say I'm putting up all the information like this over here. And if I probably do the prediction and this is right now in localhost, right? And I'm going to get the prediction something like this. Okay. Now what I'm actually going to do is that I'm going to basically deploy this. I'm first of all going to dockerize this and run it as a dockerized container. Okay. And what is dockers and all? Uh, I've already created a playlist on to that. You know, just understand that dockers saves a lot of time with respect to configuration setups and all right because the entire configuration is basically made within a docker image and that can be run as a container anywhere let it be your operating system or some cloud server wherever you want you can basically do it okay so what i'm actually going to do again i'm going to minimize this uh, let me just do control c now let me just show you first of all this step we will try to create a docker file now in order to create a docker file it's very very simple not that difficult to create a docker file itself all you have to do is that within this just go and click over here write docker file and make sure that you use this same naming convention then automatically vs code will be able to determine whether it is a docker file or not now with respect to the docker file whenever we create the first thing is that uh, understand what exactly is docker image here with the help of this file, whatever information I'm actually writing, it actually creates a Docker image. Okay. And that Docker image can be taken and it can be run within a container, which we specifically say uh, it can be run as a Docker container in any operating. Suppose if I also want to run in my lo local, it, we can run this entire Docker image as a Docker container, which will be interacting with the kernel of our operating system. Okay, it is not like a virtual machine, but you can just understand it is a kind of container which can independently run uh, by communicating with the kernel of the operating system. Now, in order to create a Docker image, first of all, there are some commands that we'll be using. One is from command. Okay, now what is this from command? I will discuss. The next command is something called as copy command. Copy. Okay, the third command is something called as work directory command. Uh, the th fourth command is something like run command and Fifth command is nothing but expose command and then finally my CMD command. Now the firm command basically says that whenever now see why why Docker is so super important guys. Suppose let's say if I don't probably create a Docker with this application and if I want to give this same application for my friend to run it right. So what my friend will do whatever installation I have done whatever setup I have done whatever library setup I have actually done he has to do all those steps manually right. And because of this, what may happen is that he may face some kind of errors or issues. So that is a major problem over there. Like you have heard this saying, right? When, when uh, QA is working, right? Suddenly, let's say when developer is working in the developer, uh, in, in a developer machine, suddenly they deploy the code into the QA machine. When the QA is basically testing, they'll say, oh, something is not working. Developer says that, oh, it is working fine in my system. So what is the main issue over here? There may be some kind of configuration, some kind of dependencies, some kind of hardware issue, or some kind of operating systems issues also, right? Because let's say I'm running an application in Windows machine and suddenly I deploy that in a Linux machine, I may get some kind of issues over there also, right? 
so docker helps us to prevent that because here in the docker image we will make sure that we have all the base con configurations set up then and there and we'll try to use that same base configuration in every machine we want to deploy it okay so first command is from now this command is basically used to select any kind of base image okay now as i said that see docker container also requires some base image base image means that okay we can have a linux operating system on top of that installed something right so suppose if i write from python uh, 3.7 so what this is going to do is that I do, i'm not going to use alpine okay alpine is again another different version okay of base image now as soon as i write python 3.7 when we are building this docker image it will go and take out the base image from the docker hub wherein it will take probably this python colon 3.7 basically means it will take a linux base image and on top of that it will try to install probably let's say a python 3.7 is installed it is going to take that particular base image and it is going to do the necessary uh, other configuration settings so in short what happens as soon as i write from python 3.7 all it is going to do is that from the docker hub because all the images are present over there it will take that particular base image which has linux on top of it python 3.7 and then it is going to do the next step that is copy copy basically means whatever code i have in this repository see all these four files that i have in the repository i need to copy within that particular base image right all these files within that base image so for that what we will do i'll just say copy from my current location from my current location to a location which i'm going to name it as app so that basically means i'm going to create an app folder within that particular base image which will be copying all my local content to that particular app folder okay and then the next step is that i'll create that as my working directory so here also i have to give my same location okay this is super super important three steps from i've taken my base image i made sure that i copied all the content all all my code from here to a app folder inside that particular base image and i'm making that as a working directory now the next thing is something called as run now see guys here also whenever we run any machine learning application there will be some dependencies in this particular case requirement.txt if you are doing a javascript project you probably have to install some of the packages and all so i need to install all these things before going ahead so for that i will be using this run command now inside this run command i'll write pip install minus r requirement.txt right so this will do all the installation or the dependencies will get installed over here finally i will go and expose now see inside my docker image when that docker image is run as a container right in order to access the application inside the container we have to expose some port then only we'll be able to access that particular entire url right because from that port only we'll be able to access that application so we are going to expose a port within that particular docker container and that port i will just write it as a placeholder which is called as dollar port why because this value when we are deploying into the cloud or server right it is going to the, the server is going to automatically or the cloud is automatically going to assign this particular port in that container okay so this is the next command and finally i will run my uh, command which is basically used to run my web application or in this particular case my entire applications so for this i'm going to use g unicorn okay g unicorn actually helps you to uh, run this entire python web application inside the heroku cloud itself so here i'm going to assign four workers workers importance is too much right workers what it does is that it uh, whenever a request is coming into the application it will divide based on the instances okay it is let's say a thousand requests are coming so if i'm using four workers it is going to take 250 requests with one 250 another like that parallelly different types of just to make that particular process uh, uh, easy right then i'm going to also bind now this ip address will be the local address in the heroku cloud and then i'm going to assign with port and this will basically be my app file along with that app file so see over here this app file is basically the file which is where i have to run my application inside this this will basically be my app name right so that is the reason why it is written app colon app app colon app basically means we are just going to take this particular file inside that we are going to run this okay so app colon app will be basically the entire process okay so we are just trying to run the first file over there and over there app is basically my file name that is present inside this okay so that is what we are going to do so this is what is the entire configuration over here what this binding is doing this is super important guys see understand about this particular binding very very important this port number whatever we have exposed in the container 
that will be getting binded to the local IP address, whatever local IP address we will be getting in the Heroku cloud, right? So that particular local IP address. So it's, it's just like a local host address 0.0.0. .0. I know it is 127.0.0 in our machine, 0 0.0.0 we can assign it over there. And this port, whatever port Heroku is uh, assigning in the container, we'll be able to access it over here. Okay, very much super clear, very much simple. G Unicorn is definitely required whenever you try to deploy anything in the Heroku Cloud Platform. Okay, simple, simple and easy. Okay, now this is done. This is my Docker file. Now the next thing that I'm actually going to do, since I also need to make sure that I have to configure my GitHub Actions. Okay, now in order to configure the GitHub Actions, whenever you want to configure GitHub Actions considering CI/CD pipeline, two folders need to be created. One is dot github and the other one is something called as dot workflow oh, sorry workflows okay workflows now why i have created this file because as soon as i deploy i push push this entire code into the repository github repository you know when it, they see this particular thing github workflow and inside this i will also create a file which is called as main.yaml file this will have the entire process as soon as i commit what all things we need to do First thing is that we need to build this Docker file. Build this Docker file basically means the entire image needs to be built. And then we have to push this image in the form of a container to the Heroku platform. Okay. So the entire configuration over here will be set up in this main.yaml. Now guys, uh, this kind of uh, main.yaml, we don't uh, write everything from scratch. They're already available. Some people have already written this. I'm just going to copy and paste it over here. But just understand what is my workflow. This main.yml will define the entire workflow. Okay. So here I'm just going to say your workflow name. This is deployed to Heroku for in which branch it is basically on as soon as from here any push command goes onto the main branch, then what will happen is that this entire build process will start. Main thing we are trying to do is build, push and release a Docker container to Heroku. Okay, so it will run on the Ubuntu latest. It will take a Ubuntu uh, operating system and do this entire process over there. But here you'll be seeing that you require three main information. One is Heroku email, Heroku API name, API key and Heroku app name. Now this three information are super, super important. Now the thing is that where do I get this specific information? Obviously from the Heroku itself, right? So Heroku here you can see that I have logged in. Let's say I want to deploy inside this Boston house pricing one. Okay. Now, if I want to get this information, this are my secret keys that is available that needs to be provided in the GitHub actions. So if I probably go over here, just a second, if I go over here and probably let's say I'm going to my Boston, uh, Boston house pricing. Now, if I go to settings, okay. In the settings, there will be something called as secrets because I have to make this as a CI CD pipeline as soon as I push my code to this GitHub repository. So I have to add some secret keys. Now click on secrets, click on new uh, repository secret. And here I will basically write my new repository secret. The first repository secret is basically, let's say I want to add Heroku API key. Okay. So I will go over here, copy and paste Heroku API key. Now, where do I get my Heroku API key? Just go into this dashboard of Heroku, go and click on account settings. And here, if you go down here, you'll be seeing API key. Just reveal this, copy this entire thing and paste it over here. Okay. So I'm just going to paste it over here. So this will indicate that which Heroku app is my information. Like I want to deploy, I want to, sorry, this will indicate which account I'm actually using in Heroku. Okay. So as soon as I click this, a secret key is adding added, but we need to still add two more secret keys. So I'm just going to click on new secret, uh, new secret key over here. And now my second secret key will be what? Uh, it will be Heroku email. The Heroku email will be the same email ID that I'm using for my Heroku uh, web app. Uh, sorry, Heroku dashboard. So it will be krishnayak06 at the rate gmail.com. This is just to give this configuration so that my deployment will happen successfully. Okay as soon as I do any push to the GitHub repository. So this is my Heroku email. Now, similarly coming to the third one, it is Heroku app name. Now Heroku app name is super important because in which app I need to deploy, deploy my code, right? So here I'll be writing Heroku app name. And again, I will go back to my account and let's go back. Let's say I want to deploy it in this Boston housing pricing, right? So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it. Okay. I'm going to paste it over here. 
Now here, I will just go and add this secret. So this all information is perfect. Uh, we have added it. Now what will happen? See, we have set up the GitHub actions. That basically means as soon as now I deploy anything over here, right? Right now you can see there is no GitHub workflows folder. Only it is present over here, right? Now, as soon as this folder has been seen and whatever file is basically written over here, all these things will get deployed. All these things, all this process will automatically happen. In short, the build, push and release of a Docker container to Heroku will happen automatically from the GitHub repository itself. Okay. And this is super important, this build, push and release because there will be many people who will be working in a team, right? And many people may commit multiple things, right? And every time if a build, uh, build, push and release actually happens, then every time we'll be able to understand what error is actually happening. Uh, someone may do some kind of errors over there. So every time this build will be a very important step to go with, right? This is what we basically follow in real world industries where we are specifically moving our content from development to staging, staging to pre-prod, pre-prod to production, you know? So with this kind of uh, containers, we'll try to create and we'll try to push it, okay? So this is done. Now let's go ahead and open my terminal. Now, as usual, I'll go to my environment and now I will add everything that I've actually done. So git add, if I probably see git status, you'll be seeing this many number of files has been created. Okay. And I'm just going to push this. Okay. Uh, let's see whether I have missed anything as such. No, 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 nothing. Um, no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, everything is here. Perfectly fine. Okay. Now I'm going to just push everything. Oh, sorry. Before that, I need to commit the snapshot. So I'll write minus M. Now uh, I'll say dockers and uh, GitHub action uh, changes commit. Okay. Because I have initiated this. So this is done. Now all I have to do is git push from origin to, I don't have to write to, push from origin to main. So you can see that everything has got done. Now, as soon as I open GitHub, right? Now see what something amazing will happen. Okay. If I reload this, some orange color will come over here. See, okay. Now let's go and see the commit. So here I will go and click it. Now you see this entire details. Automatically this entire deployment is happening. Okay. Something went wrong. Input required and not supplied Heroku app name. So something wrong is there. So let's go and see what is this thing that has gone wrong. Heroku app name, I had actually provided it, but I don't know what happened. Okay. Okay. See app underscore name should be there, right? So let's do it again. Uh, I'll add a new repository secret. Okay. Uh, new repository secret. I will go again back to my optional over here. Let's see. This was the entire app name, right? I wrote only app underscore name. Okay. So now here app name is nothing but house pricing dot this. Okay. So because of that, it failed. See this because of that, it failed, right? Uh, we will fix it. Don't no, no need to worry. We will fix it. Okay. So now I will just copy this and I will add it my secret. Add secret. Perfect. Now let's build or rerun this, rerun this job, rerun all the jobs. Okay. A new attempt of this worker, including all the jobs. Yes. Rerun these jobs. Okay. Either you can rerun it or either you can do this. Okay. So now you can see build has actually started. Okay. So the build has started. The job is started here. First of all, it has taken the Ubuntu, uh, whatever configuration we have given. Now see every step, even building of the, uh, Docker will also automatically happen, right? Every steps will probably happen over here. Pull commit this download, verifying checksum. See this copy process is again happening. Working directory changes is automatically happening. This is quite amazing guy. This pip install is basically happening and all the steps are happening. You can see over here, right? All the requirements are getting installed. See this build process. You did not do much anything, right? Automatically these things are happening. That is the power of CICD pipeline. That is the reason why DevOps and MLOps jobs are heavily required in every companies. You know, this process with respect to every project you have to do, right? So this is going to take some time. Anyhow, I will just uh, wait till all this installation will take place and then we will again start the installation. Okay. Oh, sorry. We'll, we'll uh, automatically see at the end of the day when this entire thing will happen, it will get pushed to this particular house turn 
uh, Houston, uh, sorry, Boston Housing Price uh, app itself. And then once you open the app, they will be able to see the output. Okay, so let's see. Okay, still happening. Layers already exist. Uh, pushed, pushed, pushed. That is going to probably take some time because there are many files, many installation will take place. Uh, this entire process will get run. If you get any errors, you can again rerun it. Try to always get errors. If you get errors, that basically means you will be, and if you are able to solve it, trust me, you are able to learn in an amazing way. Okay. So pushed, pushed, pushed. Now I'm just going to pause it. And once it is pushed, we will try to see the application. Okay. So I'll just come back in some time. Uh, till then I'm going to pause. Oh, see. <laughs> okay. Releasing container. Okay. Releasing container. All the steps you'll be able to see and please note down all these steps guys these steps are super important whatever things we have written in docker everything is happening because this is now getting created as a container now finally you can see my job is completed now i'll go over here open the app Ta -da! Ta -da 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 -da. let's see <laughs> still nothing is working okay you can also check logs if you are probably finding any issues in boston house pricing okay and ta -da! it's here and let's now go and execute it okay let's go and execute it here you go here you go here you go here you go and now this entire thing is running in a docker container if you don't believe me i'll show you that also i'll show you that proof once i predict it this is my output it's working absolutely fine if i probably go over here into personal here you'll be seeing now it is running as a container see before if you just deploy a python application it look like this but if you are deploying it as a container, you will be able to see like this. Okay. So I hope you like this particular video of deploying your data science application into Heroku cloud with the help of dockers and GitHub actions. Try in this particular way. And please let me know whether you want a complete series of videos with respect to dockers and GitHub actions. I will try to upload it. But for that, I require thousand likes for this particular video. So yes, this was it from my side. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.